Hello everybody, this is Bud and in this video um, I guess I need to make a, make a disclaimer before we start here. Uh, I will show you how to get rid or to automatically unlock your SSH keys. Like completely automatic. Uh, it will be linked with your login. So when you log in to your user account it will automatically unlock your uh, SSH keys or the SSH, you, you will be able to specify which keys to automatically unlock but disclaimer I know there are security issues doing that uh, but sometimes it's also super convenient to do that for some SSH keys at least I know maybe this isn't the best don't take everything I say with a grain of salt so to speak uh, in this video uh, if nothing else it I will at least show you a, a very nice little feature of uh, system D that is very useful you will see it's not related to our system D configuration this is something that you can use with um, any setup any graphical X setup I guess and um, if it's not clear from the title we will do this by using a gnome uh, tool but first before anything I will actually go to virtual terminal 2 and I need to do that on this soft keyboard, otherwise it triggers the host switching of the virtual uh, terminals here. So you know, you can do this on Linux, you can go to these virtual terminal things. Um, and then we can actually log in here with the default Linux login program. And if I do that, enter my username, enter my password, we are logged in. And now we are not logged in to a graphical session, like a normal session like this. Um, I have prepared a git directory here and I have also somewhere in my history I have a git clone command and this git clone is using ssh to clone a repository from my bud labs uh, organization and when you're using ssh if you have it set up with github we will not go into that how to do that uh, but uh, you know SSH you create a public key and a private key they are created simultaneously and then you uh, upload your public key to github for instance or some other service or a server you can also use it like that you know to remote access another computer but they need the public key but you keep the private key always on your local machine and then you can also password and you should password protect that private key uh, and when I want to uh, connect here now with SSH to GitHub, for instance, uh, then it will test here now the private key against the, the public key. And the private key is locked with a password. So now I have to enter that password to unlock my private key. Not sure if I made a typo there. There, and it clones, and that's great. Uh, and we have cloned our, uh, our repository here. If I remove this directory and do it again, you will see we, we have to do the same thing, of course. Matches, need the password, enter the password, and I can, can clone it. Uh, and that's, I think that's good. The, also, <laughs> disclaimer, probably this is the best thing to do this. It's just enter the, the password whenever you need to do this. It's not that often that you have to, to actually authenticate yourself, maybe. But sometimes it feels like you are entering these passwords over and over and over again, you know. And open SSH comes with a utility called SSH agent. Um, and if we start our SSH agent, which is do simply by entering the command ssh agent it also prints some uh, stuff here and yeah that got weird because now uh, we didn't you see what, what it prints the output there are environment variables and how you are really supposed to do this um, i will do this now ssh agent or that will not work either because we don't have the pid there um, so I will actually do this, kill 1546, that will kill that agent there. And then instead, what, how, how you are supposed to do this, 
quotation mark is to evaluate the output of the command ssh agent because that will also export those environment variables. I cannot show you with the mouse because it's not visible in the uh, screen there. Um, th this will evaluate uh, those environment variables so they will be available. And now the, the SSH agent is running in the background. Now you can add uh, your SSH keys to that agent, you know. And the key we were using here uh, with GitHub is uh, SSH ID RSA. And if you add that, then you have to enter the password here to the agent. Um, and when that is done, now we don't need to enter that password anymore. As long as this agent is running, it have the that key stored can see what keys are are stored with the L option and there we can see it has one one key you can remove keys from the agent but keep it running uh, by using this for example will empty all the keys from the agent all identities removed list no no identities um, and you can also add the keys with uh, set a, at uh, expiration time for them and stuff like that and that is probably a good thing to do also uh, but once they are added, um, now we don't need to enter that uh, password to unlock the key when, when we use it. So now when I clone here you will see that it will simply just clone it. I, I know most people probably know this but I still want to make this uh, uh, intro here. So that's great right? And now we can use that key throughout our session here as long as the agent is running. And once you have done this one time, you will re realize, hey, that is really nice. Now I never have to enter my password. That's great. And then you might even uh, say that um, you can also, if everything is set up correctly, then you can kill your SSH agent with SSH agent K. And you, I think you should actually also evaluate this because as you can see here, that unsets those environment variables, but it also kills the, the PID that is associated with a currently running agent. But this SSH agent and eval SSH agent thing, it is kind of weird because it's, uh, it's very easy to get lingering SSH agents. So you can have multiple of these SSH agent processes running on your system without you really knowing it. Let, let's see if we have any now. I don't know. PID of SSH agent. No, we don't have any now, but sometimes when you do this and you see, hey, why do I have 10 PIDs here? And each of those SSH agents running in the background have your unlocked keys. So if someone would be able to kind of hijack those processes, they could use them. And this is possible to do uh, to use your keys without entering passwords and stuff like that. So there are problems associated with, with these methods as well. And another thing that is quite common to do and is also sometimes even officially recommended is to kind of add this to your profile uh, file. So if I open vim home directory dot profile. So this is the shell script that is sourced uh, whenever you log in. And this is true even if you are using light DM or if you are using what we did now when we logged in from the default Linux terminal, so to speak, we could start do this here. So we, we set up the SSH agent here. And now I know you can do this much better. I, I know that, but not to, to get stuck on this part of the video too long here. Uh, if we simply just do this and next line SSH add. And if you just do it like this, don't specify which key you want to add. It will simply add all available keys. Um, and prompt you for the password. And since this is the dot profile, it should only be sourced when you log in. Um, so that means that we now get a double password prompt, kind of. If I log out now, now we log in there, enter the password. So now as soon as I log in, it will source that login file and that should uh, start the SSH agent and add the keys, prompt me for the SSH password. If everything is working and it does enter password for SSH keys 
and the SSH keys, of course, are, are stored there in CD uh, SSH. Here they are, and I only have one here. Uh, and now, since we did this at login, now we don't have to think about this at all, and I can immediately, uh, for example, go to our git directory, empty it first, and I don't have to enter the password. Should just be able to clone here and 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 uh, yeah, use it, and that is kind of a common thing to do. The draw one drawback with that is of course now we get double password prompts, and it also only works here if we if you are using the Linux uh, login thing, which we ha are doing now on Light DM. This wouldn't work because then it wouldn't know. Uh, it would, yeah, you you know, you get the prompt in a terminal somewhere, and but you don't have a terminal there when, when Light DM is sourcing the profile. Uh, but even if you are using the Linux login, and I, I used to have it set up like this for, for the longest time myself. Uh, let's do this: ssh agent k to kill it, and then we edit profile again and remove that thing we just added because now we are done here with my example. And this is what we will uh, fix in this video, is uh, how to automatically, so you only need to enter one password, your user password, that will automatically unlock a key ring, which have uh, your SSH keys uh, and automatically unlock them. But you can still have like a different, you don't have to have the same password on your SSH keys as your login password, but you have the same password on the key ring as you have as your login password. But all of that is set up automatically, at least on SUSE here, but we, we get back to that. This is uh, a bit <laughs> weird, but it is also quite comfy once it's set up. But I know there are like lots of things to, to uh, consider uh, security wise, if, if nothing else about this. All right. Um, now we can exit here and then we go back to the graphical session on 7. This might be different on, on uh, uh, different distributions, but SUSE by default have the graphical virtual terminal on 7. Uh, and then we can close this guy. And if I log in now to my normal session here. We will see this and we can go to the same directory git. We have that crap there. Uh, RF star git clone. And now we get the same thing here. And yeah, same, same story again. We could uh, start the SSH agent and do that, or we can add it like this and blah, blah, blah. Um, I have prepared this a bit also with a page on the Bud Labs YouTube wiki. Uh, so we will open that here. It's probably a good idea to have it open while we do this. It's not difficult to set this up, but it's also extremely weird and tricky. If you miss one single thing, things get weird. Uh, so I added here this wiki. As you can see, the instructions here are just, is, is basically nothing. But it is very easy to mess it up also. I also added a bunch of C also pages here. For example, Arch Wiki about GNOME keyring and Arch Wiki about SSH keys and open SSH. All of these three is really good to look at, especially these SSH uh, pages here. Uh, also found this, I stumbled upon them while doing this, which kind of in a way, it explains very well what the security implications of using SSH agent are, and uh, even you might think that you have set it up in a really nice, reliable way like this, uh, it might still have uh, issues. And it explains a bit about these common attacks and stuff like that, but it is also kind of a deceptive... Uh, these two articles, they, you can see they are from the same domain, uh, the person who have written these is uh, have also created his own utility. So he is kind of shilling for his own uh, product here, SSH Ident, which is like a 
companion tool for SSH agent or something like that. I have not even tried this. And he is also uh, kind of... Uh, so some of the stuff here is fake news, to be honest. He say that you should... Uh, that you have to set this stuff up in bash rc. Uh, but it's different. What I just showed you was that you should do this in dot profile. And he say that the problem with if you do this in bash rc, then it will execute this every time you open a, a, a terminal, and that is true. But if you set it up in profile, it will not do that. And he doesn't mention that whatsoever here. He also doesn't mention that it is much better to set it up with uh, systemd, which you can see in, I think it's in the archwiki ssh keys here, or maybe it's this one. They have a good section about that. Um, uh, maybe no here it is start ssh agent uh, with system d user and this is like the normal built-in ssh agent what we will do now in this video is actually not use the uh, default ssh agent and instead use gnome keyrings ssh agent thing here but it seems to work fine uh, or to be honest we might it might actually be the default ssh agent we are using anyways but this is also a much better way than what he say, and he doesn't mention that whatsoever, that you can also start the SSH agent with systemd. Uh, and that is also better, it, it reduces the risk of you having those lingering uh, SSH agent processes that have access to all your SSH keys, which is not so good, but that doesn't happen as easy when you set it up like this. Just as <laughs> some uh, uh, more disclaimers. So these are good articles to also read about the uh, pitfalls, but he also uh, forgets, in quotation mark to, to mention some uh, alternative solutions. Um, all right. Another disclaimer. Uh, I'm doing this on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, uh, so some of the package names and some of the paths might differ on different distributions. And also, it, it makes a difference depend what your uh, desktop manager is. If you are using Light DM, then some things are taken care of automatically. Otherwise, you might need to manually edit the PAM configuration, and that you can read about in the ArchWiki GNOME keyring page here. Uh, that you need to manually do stuff like this for it to automatically unlock the keyring and update the password of the keyring when you change the user password and stuff like that. Uh, but all of that was is taken care of, at least on SUSE with Light DM, but it might differ. Um, the packages we need are GNOME keyring. Then in ArchWiki it says that you also need this thing, but I noticed that I don't need it to get it working here, but I'm not sure exactly what this is doing. Maybe this uh, is a good thing to also have installed to, to get a SSH agent forwarding and stuff like that working out. I, I have only tested it here with uh, Git and like Git repos. Uh, and you need this. And this is an optional package, uh, which is a GUI frontend for the Kiri. Um, all right, we can do this actually. RPM QL GNOME Keyring. This lists out the content of this package because I have actually already installed this one. We can see here what it installs. These are kind of interesting xdg auto start files here uh, also these systemd uh, units here it's a service unit and a socket unit and they are very important here um, we can actually look at the uh, 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 service unit here and sure we could just do this cat and then the address here and that of course work but there is a, a built-in uh, functionality in systemd that is kind of nice because you know these paths to the different systemd units it feels like they are located all over the place sometimes uh, so you can do this systemctl user cat and then gnome keyring service and that uh, now systemd will automatically cat that content you don't have to know the full path and it will even print the actual path where that uh, unit is located. 
And uh, worth noticing here is also that it installs these units, even if it is in the system directory here, it is under systemd user. And that means we have access to it with uh, the user option to systemctl. We don't need sudo to uh, enable, start, and even modify these uh, units, as you will see. Even if this file uh, is owned by root, of course. So if we do lsl there, we can see root root. We don't have access, uh, write access or anything to this. We can still modify this with uh, without pseudo privileges. And this is kind of cool. I like this feature. System CTL user edit uh, gnome keyring service. And that will start the editor, uh, which in my uh, configuration is Vim. Uh, and here you can see the, that whole unit commented out. But you can add overrides here, uh, like this. And what we want to override is actually the exec start command. Because by default, this GNOME keyring doesn't uh, have the SSH component activate, activated. You can see, see there the component uh, command line option is uh, not uh, SSH is not included. Uh, you can also read about this in the Arch wiki uh, that you need to add this here. SSH. And you also need to specify the section, which is service. So service and then exec start. This will now create an override for that uh, 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 unit file, but it will not overwrite everything in the file, only the things we specify here. So it will still keep all of this requires GNOME keyring daemon socket and the install section. We, we don't over, override that with, with these lines here. I save this and that will actually create files now for us in... Um, if we open Thunar, we can see them. In our systemd user configuration, it have created this directory which is named the same thing as the uh, service uh, we just edited dot d and that in turn has override dot conf so all files in this uh, directory with the conf uh, extension will override that gnome keyring daemon service so you can manually create these uh, directories uh, you, you see how the naming convention is and create your own override files and you can edit multiple overrides override files if, if you want to and um, the file name is uh, not important here. We could change the file name here to be like uh, add SSH component or something, which would kind of make sense, but this is also fine. But it needs to have the .conf uh, extension. And here we can see the content of the file is simply just these lines now. Uh, when we looked at it in Vim, we had all the comments, but they are removed once you have saved, saved it. Right, uh, quit. And let's make it tabbed, right? And now we can also try to start uh, this service to make sure that it's working. Service, it will not work. I know that it will not work. And it tells us that we should look at the status for more details. Let's do that. System CTL user status, no keyring service. And here we can see this uh, good old error message again service has more than one exec start setting which is only allowed for type one shot and this is something we have encountered before uh, and then we just simply uh, change the type to one shot to, to give it but we don't actually have multiple exec starts you know we we over we we are using our override to override the exec start section but here it gets a bit weird because exec start even if it just say so here that it is not allowed to have multiple exec start, it is still one of the options that can be specified multiple times. And when you create an override uh, and you have some of these options, is that as they are, uh, uh, as you can enter multiple, it will simply append that option. Uh, so now we actually have two exec starts. And to fix this, we have to add one more exec start. It's so it, it's kind of weird. I know, I know. It's typical system D <laughs> problem and solution here. But to fix it, you do this. 
exec start equals an empty exec start will kind of clear out the earlier one and add uh, our new one so to speak but you don't have to do this for all uh, options sometimes uh, it will override it as, as you would expect for example restart i think or maybe that is also one of those whatever sometimes you don't need to do this but sometimes you do uh, now with that done we can try to start it we don't get any errors we can look at the status we see it's running and we can also see here the command line that was started was uh, uh, has our ssh component included that's great but we actually don't want to just start this we want to enable this this is important to enable this service so it will automatically start uh, when we log in it will automatically start the gnome keyring and at least on SUSE here now, it also when you install the GNOME keyring, it also installs a uh, search for GNOME keyring. This is probably super slow, but it also installs a PAM package that sets up that automatic logging into the keyring and stuff like that. So you have to try this stuff yourself a bit to see what, how it works on your system if you're not using the same distribution here but you see this package sets up the PAM module it's kind of important here uh, and that is why everything simply just works out of the box here now as you will see uh, okay we enable this service meaning it should automatically start and we have added the SSH component to uh, the service Notice we haven't been needing a sudo whatsoever here, really good. And I think what we do now is log in, log out. No, there is one last thing and I also have it here. We also need to export a specific environment variable here where uh, the GNOME keyring SSH agent socket is and that is here and that is not obvious at all from anything we have done here um, one way to, to see it is to execute the gnome keyring daemon you'll see this is kind of the same thing as ssh uh, agent it prints out that environment variable so this is also something you could evaluate and this is the same ssh auth soc as you need to add here uh, the thing is, it this is kind of a static, uh, which is different from from the SSH agent. Uh, it it creates a new random number kind of path for this, but GNOME keyring always creates this path. But this one thousand number here, that is the user ID, which is an environment variable. UID, you see, that's the ID of the current user. It will always do it here. And this whole path here, run user user ID, that is also stored in the environment variable, or it should be stored, but it doesn't have to be set up depending on your distribution. XDG runtime dir have that. So the correct way here to specify SSS auth soc is XDG runtime dir slash keyring slash SSH. And you do that wherever you export environment variables. And we have uh, used um, we have our own startup script where I have added some environment variables, uh, which is X related, which this is, and I think we can use the same here, desktop ini. But you could also add this to xinit rc or like. Uh, even bash rc but then this is uh, dependent on x xdg runtime dir and and um, gnome keyring here so i like to add it here and this is also important step to do so now with all of this set up we log out and log back in and hope that it is working now get 
here, go to our test directory here, it's empty, find our git clone command in the history because I don't remember how to write it, there it is, with ssh, still doesn't work. Now I am actually a bit surprised that it didn't work here. Ah, I know what it is. We enabled uh, the GNOME keyring service, but we actually, you kind of need to do enable now to make sure it's started here. In one way, when you're doing this stuff here, it is actually advised from my part here that you actually reboot to make sure that things is uh, set up correctly here. I know it, it, it might feel a bit overkill, but let's do that to make sure because that those um, we are not starting these systemd services as we start most of our other things we have done so far in the systemd ser uh, series here where we start them from the i3 main service file and stuff like this. This should be started uh, immediately when we log in here and isn't really related to our session so to speak, uh, our custom session that is. If we log in now, come here, come on now. Yes, we get an error. It still doesn't work. If we now check the status uh, of our GNOME keyring daemon service we get some clues here in the error that it tried to execute some program here usr libexec gcr ssh askpass uh, but we don't have that file we need to install another package here uh, so if i do super search askpass you will see and I advise you to do similar thing on uh, if you have a different uh, distribution uh, figure out what's missing here and search and it is ask pass and you will see that uh, and or here I have actually installed GCR GCR SSH ask pass I have a package call, call like that already installed and that is the same name of this file here also, this is installed, and I think this was installed by default. This is installed in the base uh, OpenSUSE uh, configuration. Something that's called OpenSSH askpass GNOME. But it's not related really to this GNOME keyring. It's actually not related to GNOME, I think. It's just using GTK. Um, but I haven't been able, I tried to. Uh, figure out how to make this point to that program instead because it is simply one of these yet another one of these password prompt programs but you really need to in, uh, make sure that this is available here at least that's how it is now and I found that there is also this package gcr3 ssh pass because we do this rpm ql gcr ssh ask pass this is my installed gcr ask pass and, and it provides just one single file and it's the same as here except that this one is called gcr4 that is the default one here at least on SUSE, this is the case and that is not what, what we want i believe this is the gtk4 version which this doesn't isn't or something like that so what we need to do is install Super install gcr3 ssh ask pass enter the password so sure now you need sudo of course to install the packages but uh, otherwise <clears throat> this is a we can do everything without the sudo privileges here and I think that's kind of cool And now it's installed and now we try to clone again now uh, that uh, library will be available and we should now get a GUI password prompt great here 
Very important now, if you are trying this yourself, make sure that this line is also in this prompt, because that might not always be the case, and that is the interesting part here. Because up until now, it's the same thing, we still need to enter the password here uh, for our SSH key. And now I don't check this box. Unlock and we can clone, and we, now it that key is also unlocked and managed here by uh, I think it's managed by, <laughs> by Gnome Keyring but it might actually be managed by an SSH agent that was started somehow uh, I, I'm not 100% sure anymore uh, and now we can use that key throughout our session when we log out uh, I guess we can do that we, we need to need to enter the key again but now we should at least now be able to use it here until we log out so let's do that let's log out log back in open a terminal clone now we should get the dialog again no hmm Oh, okay, I guess the keyring is active then, anyways. But I would suspect that if we reboot, we will probably need to, or probably need to enter the password again for it. You see, this is why it's a bit weird. These uh, GNOME keyring uh, units there—they are kind of running even if we log out. They are not connected to that i3 session that we have that closes everything when we log out. And these are things that you kind of don't want to do. That maybe, I guess, or maybe you do. Uh, maybe we should set it up to also terminate the GNOME keyring and start that from our uh, systemd session. Kind of out of scope for this video here now, but worth considering. Uh, log in. Clone. Now we get the dialog, right? Yes. Right. Let's do this now. Enter the password. And automatically unlock this key whenever I'm logged in. Unlock. There. Remove this. And reboot again, I guess, to, t to make sure this works now. Because the, if, if it works now, that means we will never have to enter enter that SSH uh, key again. Or the password for that SSH key again. It will automatically be unlocked and linked to our user account. Um, and I think that's at least one thing that makes this... A little bit more secure is that you have to check that box so you, sometimes you know you you will uh, use keys that you might feel hey this is the company ssh key i probably shouldn't just add that to my stupid dirt hack <laughs> gnome keyring setup here and then you simply don't add that key to automatically unlock itself so you always get the prompt uh, when you want to use it login Let's hope this works now. Git. Git clone. Ooh, it works. It works. Because now it all just magically works. And I think that's kind of neat to have it set up. It's at least for some keys, you know, like my GitHub key. I think that it's fine for this. But as I just mentioned, you might have a company SSH keys or, or like client servers that simply try to keep them as secure as possible and always enter the password and stuff like that. I also mentioned this Seahorse front-end GUI program which you can install if you want to. You, you don't need to install this at all uh, but this is a way to, to see uh, the, the content of the GNOME keyring. You may or may not see this keyring here, login. Uh, ah, interesting. Now this is included here. Because the login keyring, that is, yeah, the login keyring, the main keyring, which gets automatically unlocked, it should be also set as default. So you might also need to set this up manually. And if you need to do that, you go here to the plus. Uh, password keyring 
and you can name it whatever you want, but you need to add the same password as your user password. Uh, and then you set it as default. So, you know, that is where this is insecure is that if someone gets your user password, they can also unlock your key ring easily with that, you know. And then if you have this set up also, then all of a sudden they have all your SSH keys unlocked also. So this, I know this is not the best from a security standpoint, but it is probably not much more insecure than, than most of these eval SSH agent nonsense that everyone uses anyways and automatically adds SSH keys and stuff like that. That is also not good. Um, check out the links there. I strongly recommend you, you, you looking up um, those articles I told you were <laughs> somewhat fake news. They are still worth reading about the different security issues and it made me like consider that I yeah I should should think about what kind of keys I actually store here to automatically get unlocked but um, I, I I will continue to automatically unlock my, my git uh, SSH keys but it is probably or it is advised to uh, to create separate ssh keys for uh, yeah basically each uh, account or each service and each server that you need to use them for you know and probably also have different password for them and stuff like that you know th this is that stuff all right so not that difficult but it is also kind of easy to mess this up super easy to mess it up Sometimes, many times I try this, I don't get that checkbox. So it, it doesn't tell me, well, do you want to automatically unlock this when you log in? You, you get the prompt and it works and it works like a normal SSH agent, but I have to do it every time. I cannot store them like, like we did there. Uh, follow these steps carefully to do that. And it should work. I should actually update this maybe. No, no, I think they are good now. Enable GNOME Keyring service. Yes. Yeah. Let's not get too sidetracked here. Um, this SSH agent thing, by the way, it is so common that many distributions actually automatically do that for you. Oh, how nice. Thank you, Suse, for doing that. Where are you doing that? They are doing that in the X session startup scripts. And it is quite difficult to turn it off and I'm not sure I was able to do that. That is out of scope for this. But some distributions don't do it at all, like Arch, and you have to manually create one of these SSH start thing. And I think that even if they are recommending in one way that you should create a systemd unit, they also tell you exactly how you can do that profile thing in the wiki here. I also found this. Uh, I haven't tested this and maybe this is better, maybe not. This is a repository uh, and you can see this script has a rather specific use case. If you fit the following demographic, this is for you. You use systemd, check. You log in at the Linux VT using Getty and that was what we were doing in the beginning of the video. So I guess we don't do that now, but I wonder if this doesn't work with LightDM also. Uh, you have a systemd user service called SSH agent service. So you have set that, that up. So what this boils down to, this is someone who figured out how to create uh, or how to set up a PAM module for the normal SSH agent and unlock, uh, I think you unlock a specific key with this. Haven't tested this, cannot vouch for it, hasn't been updated in, in three years, but uh, this might also be a more lightweight in quotation mark and less confusing in one way than what we just did here with GNOME keyring. But on the other hand, here you have to mess with PAM stuff and, and I, I really want to, to do that as little as possible. Because you can really, you, you can get locked out, <laughs> literally, if you mess something up with PAM. So you cannot log in at all as neither as root or, or a normal user and it can be very bad. But probably fixable if you are managed to like do a remote uh, boot of the system or something like that but read these links strongly recommend set this up if you want to if nothing else we at least saw how you can use this 
uh, edit with systemctl, which is really handy to, to use to, to override. Then you don't have to duplicate uh, system um, services. And the benefit with this is, you know, uh, the GNOME keyring daemon service here, that was installed by the GNOME keyring daemon package. And that means when that package updates, that might also over, overwrite these uh, installed units. And if you modify those units directly, then your uh, changes will be overwritten by the package manager. That could at least happen, but it will not happen when you use the edit option here, you get those overrides in the user directory and that's really good. Even if it is a bit awkward that you need to add this extra, <laughs> extra empty exec start. It, it is very useful to know about this. All right, all right, um, we leave it here. Next video, I just, I, it's a more or less an empty document. I just added some links that I thought was related, but they aren't really, but whatever, uh, will be about locking. I am more or less done, done with uh, everything I need to do. So you can lock the screen with the screensaver background and it's a secure lock and it will automatically lock when you suspend and stuff like that. That is what the next video will be about. Till then, have a great day. Bye, bye, bye.